Hey there everyone, welcome to Violet's Dream Tarot. So today we're going to be doing the Love Predictions reading for January. I know it's a little bit late because we're already um, a week into January, but I was so busy with the 2022 predictions things and obviously taking a short break over the holiday period that I wasn't able to get the January predictions out before the start of the month. So that's what we're doing today. I've got a lot of people to thank because a lot of you have been so kind. You know that it's my birthday in a few days and you've sent me some really lovely gifts and I'm really excited to introduce them um, on the channel. So I'll just get to that in a moment. But as you can see today, we've got on the piles these Beauty and the Beast figures. Now I used to use these kinds of some some uh, plushes a lot in my old type of reading because the previous filming setup that I had meant that they would be like this and they would be facing the camera which would be here but now obviously as we're looking from above I kind of put them all like this on the piles and then thought no that looks <laughs> that doesn't look right so I've sort of propped them up um, like that but we'll get to that in a moment so let's just thank everyone that has sent some love to this channel today. As I said, I've got a lot of people to thank. So as always, I want to thank all of my lovely subscribers and I want to thank all of my lovely patrons as well, including Alexandra, Kelly, Mia, Joan, Nicole, and Cara. Thank you so much to each of you for all of the support and love that you show to me and the channel and the work that I do. And let me show you the gorgeous new decks that I've received over the past couple of days. So I want to say thank you to Brenda for the lovely Oracle of Shadows and Light, which I'm really excited uh, to use. This is a deck that uses Jasmine Beckett Griffith's uh, artwork. I've followed her career for about 15 years. She is probably my favorite modern artist. Um, so I'm really, really excited to use that deck. Thank you so much, Brenda, for your kindness and your generosity. I know that you're new to the channel as well, so that's a big thing to do. So thank you so much. Um, thank you so much to Raj, who is a much loved client and a, a regular over on my Etsy page and of course on the channel as well. She has sent in um, the Modern Wiccan spell book which has all of these beautiful witch cards and she's also sent us a new deck of uh, dice guys so for those of you that are new to the channel I always use charms and dice when I do my readings and now we have adventure time dice to <laughs> add to our set of dice. We had Harry Potter dice quite recently added by the lovely Kara, who I'm coming to in a moment. And now we have Adventure Time dice, so I'm really excited to use those. And thank you so much, Raj, for your generosity. It's super, super lovely to receive both of those gifts from you, and I'm really excited to use them, and I love the deck already. And Kara, who is always so generous, she sends in a new deck pretty much every month. She is a patron, she is a client of mine, and just a much-loved fan and viewer of the channel she has very kindly sent in the shaman's dream oracle okay so this is a really beautiful deck with really stunning imagery from colette baron reed again really looking forward to use it i honestly can't express my gratitude enough to each and every one of you your kindness humbles me and blows me away every single day not just in the form of gifts but the lovely comments that you send me and everyone who supports me by subscribing to the channel and being on patreon and you know being um, a client of mine it really does mean such an awful lot to me and we've now just passed two years of the channel a few days ago so i'm really excited to see what this third year is going to bring so with that being said, I'm sorry for the long ramble for those of you that are wanting to get straight into the video, but I have to express gratitude to all of you lovely kind people. Thank you so much, Brenda, Raj and Kara, for your kindness and your generosity in sending in those gifts. That's a lovely early birthday present for me. So let's get in now to the piles. Um, we've got three piles as always today, but we're also choosing a gnome because that's what we do with the monthly love predictions. We choose a pile and we also choose a gnome. So as I said, I felt really drawn to put these Beauty and the Beast figures on the piles today. I'm really not sure why, but maybe there's a meaning there for some of us. So on pile one, we have got Cogsworth and we've got the Tarot in Wonderland. He is obviously the clock from Beauty and the Beast. Then on pile two, we have the beast himself. And we've got the Tarot of the Divine. And over on pile three, we've got Lumiere, the Candelabra, and Ramsey's Tarot of Eternity. So those are the piles. And then for the gnomes, we've got Gizmond, Gnome A, 
Gunfeld, Gnome B. Geyer, Gnome C. And Gjord, Gnome D. So you can take as much time as you need. If you want to just choose a pile for now and then choose your gnome or gnomes afterwards, that's completely fine. You know, some people find it hard to choose more than one thing at once, that's fine. Watch your pile and then come back and choose a gnome or go back to the start of the video or scroll back a little bit if you want to see the close-ups again. Ask yourself what's coming towards me in love in January. Take the pile or piles or gnome and gnomes that resonate with you in terms of your intuition. Don't choose just your favorite character or your favorite deck. Just go for what you feel drawn towards with your intuition because that will give you the most accurate reading. And at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. So when you're ready, you guys, I will get started with pile number one. And thank you for bearing with me during this longer than usual introduction. Hey there, group one. Welcome to your reading if you chose Cogsworth and the tarot in wonderland this is going to be uh the main part of your reading and then what the gnomes will do is they will give you some extra cards and also some channeled messages as well and what that does is it makes it like a layered reading so you get more of a personalized reading for the monthly love predictions so welcome in i would love it if you could subscribe if you haven't already that means that you get notified whenever i release a new video and it also really helps to support my channel as well and the work that i do so let's see what's coming up for you in love in January, group one. Wow. Okay, we've got quite a lot of tarot cards, but I'm going to take all of them. I normally, I'm not someone who likes to get loads and loads of tarot cards when I do a reading. I like to get more um, oracle cards. I know some readers like loads and I'm one who normally gets like three or four cards from the tarot to begin with, but we'll take all of them. So you have got the tower coming through as your first card, then we've got the two of swords, we've got the high priestess, those lovely Alice cards, we have the star, so we've got quite a few major arcana cards, judgment as well, the three of wands, The lovers, wow. The moon, so many major arcana cards. And the ace of swords, so you've got the two of swords and the ace of swords. Wow, okay, so let me just point out what zodiac signs are popping through at the moment. We might get more as we go through the reading, but this is just for those of you that um, are interested in astrology. So we've got Aquarius and we've got Gemini and we've got Pisces coming through so far. So. I see it as being a very intense month when it comes to love, uh, group one. This might be something that you're already involved in because, I mean, starting off with the tower is pretty intense. It's a pretty fiery uh, experience, lots of change, a big shakeup. Um, and then we've got the two of swords and the high priestess. So two twos right next to each other, which symbolize this sense of maybe uncertainty, maybe struggling to make a choice, maybe wondering really which direction is the best for you and it's interesting that this is Alice in Wonderland and we've got the Cheshire Cat in the moon there because he does say to Alice when she's lost you could go this way you could go that way you could go both ways and obviously she derides him as being nonsensical but that's the whole point of Tarot in Wonderland and the Wonderland story in general is that it makes no sense and I feel like that's what you're thinking in January with regards to your love life because it just seems so up and down. We've got the star which indicates healing and a sense of positivity with regards to the future, optimism and feeling like things are on the up. We've also got judgment which indicates another big change, a big shift. It feels like you're at a crossroads with regards to what you want to do. And I strongly feel that this is a karmic situation where you are dealing with old karmic ties, either from your past in this life or from a past life with someone that you're dealing with in love or with just the topic of love in general. Okay, we've got the three of wands, expansion, possibility, potential, the lovers, obviously that's showing they're probably being someone in your life or someone on your mind with regards to love in January, but it could just be the topic of love in general that's having this big shake up for you. We've got the moon, that's more uncertainty, that's doubt, that's anxiety or insecurity in love. And then the ace of swords, which I like 
as your final card from the tarot because that suggests that you end this month on a note of decisiveness and certainty it's like you come out of all of this cloudiness this insecurity this fear this doubt this anxiety this feeling of being unsure as to what your next steps should be and you come out of it and suddenly you've got your answer you know what you want to do you've got the truth you've got your clarity etc you know what the truth is in this situation and what is meaningful to you and what you're going to do moving forward so yeah lots of ups and downs in love in january but you end on a very decisive note which i really really like So we have healing family issues, your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Now that could very much be where the tower and judgment are coming in. Because as I said, judgment isn't necessarily just past life situations. It can be things just from your past in general. And when judgment comes up, it also suggests, as I said before, this crossroads situation where you are looking to make drastic changes in your life. So you could be really looking maybe even to get married or to revolutionize the way that you approach love and view love in general. I feel like you've been through a lot of healing. You're still on that journey, but you're having a lot of realizations about yourself in January and what love means to you and how you approach love and what you're looking for and what your personality is and your love language and all of this is just sort of coming together to give you this clarity. So you have this card from the Lover's Oracle which says, let there be closeness between you, but always give each other space. Love never claims, it simply allows and gives. Okay, so like I said, it's it's revolutionizing the way that you approach love and what you understand about what other people need or what your partner needs and what you need as well and how that comes together. You might be understanding your attachment style or... For example, you might be looking really deeply into your birth chart and understanding your moon sign, your Mercury sign, Venus sign, Eros sign, uh, Psyche sign, all of these things, Juno sign that refer to how you um, relate to love and not just the sign, but the house they're in and the aspects that um, are having an influence on them. It's like there's a lot of real self-discovery in this month that has a big knock-on effect for the way you approach love. It's just like this massive realization. So here we have number 82, Starköpfigkeit. And Starköpfigkeit is like um, stubbornness. It's like pigheadedness or um, what's that word? There's another word. No, I can't think of it. It's, it's something headedness where you're really like stubborn and you won't change your mind and you're not going to, um, you know, be persuaded differently. So that's one issue in love that's either been affecting you up until this point or is now starting to affect you in January. Then we have also got number 73, Machtkampf, power struggle. Okay. We have number 66, Groll. Groll is resentment or grudge. And we've got number 54, Beziehungsverschwörung, relationship conspiracy. So some really heavy cards and some interesting dynamics to unpack for you in January. You might be really analyzing past relationships and looking at how you acted and reacted and how they acted and reacted and how your past and their past sort of influenced that and personality types and all of this thing. It's really like you're giving so much deep thought into love and yourself and your psyche and your makeup and all of these things in January. So obviously stubbornness is when you're unwilling to change or you're unwilling to see a different viewpoint. Machtkampf, power struggle, that's where two people are both trying to dominate in the relationship. There's not an equality there because there's two very strong personalities or there's two people that both want to be in control or on top or wearing the trousers and, you know, there's there's not a, a simple flow there of roles and expectations. Grudge or resentment can be connected to that, obviously, where you feel taken advantage of or you feel like someone's not fulfilling what you expect of them or need of them. And relationship conspiracy is where you genuinely are just like 
the whole idea of love and relationships is one big con or it's one big conspiracy or everyone else is lying when they say they're happy or everyone else is maybe happy but it can never happen for me you know when you tell yourself these big conspiracy theories about love and about relationships and it's mainly just a distraction from the difficult experiences you've had and accepting that sometimes we're unlucky and that we don't have maybe complete control over that or sometimes we make the wrong choices and we have to hold our hands up and say yep I ignored that red flag because I just wanted it to work out or yep I shouldn't have done that but I just really wanted to be with that person you know etc we're not going to pry into that into this reading but that's what I feel is coming through from that card so let's get one of the new decks the oracle of shadows and light Okay, we have Sewer Mermaid, number 25, Your Sensuality is Beautiful. That was honestly always one of my favourite paintings from Jasmine, even like li literally 14 or 15 years ago when I first discovered her. I really liked that one because I thought it was so unique and original. So Sewer Maid is telling me that you might be having a bit of a, a difficult time with regards to your sensuality and intimacy and your vulnerability in relationships. And that doesn't just have to mean physical intimacy and vulnerability, it's emotional as well. With that card, it sort of suggests that you feel intimacy is in some way dirty or demeaning yourself. You might feel that being open emotionally debases you or robs you of your respect or your your right to be respected. There's some sort of issue there that's that's getting in the way of true openness and intimacy and obviously it's going to be different for everyone and it's going to be caused by different reasons but this is just to acknowledge that sensuality and intimacy are completely beautiful when they're done openly and healthily and freely offered Now, I was debating when I was shuffling that deck whether I should use one of the mermaid cards, but with that one coming out, I absolutely felt I had to. So we've got Homeland, number 44, Arrival, A Journey Ends, Establishment, Building, Settled. So what that tells me is that by the end of the month of January, you will feel a lot more settled in love. You will feel like you've arrived in a sense that you've come to your conclusion, you've come to your kind of stable mindset, all of these roller coaster ups and downs mentally or emotionally or in your life circumstances have settled down and you now have the clarity of mind to move forward and decide what you want to do. And that could be very connected to Homeland in the sense of you thinking that you might want to move in with someone maybe that's where all the roller coaster emotions are coming from sharing a home or buying a home together or moving across the country to be closer to someone it's maybe that kind of big upheaval or big crossroads situation big life change so group one we've now got the lovely new modern wiccan spellbook deck and we've got the forest witch number 16 now what i remember from that card from the guidebook is that it's telling you that a little bit of fear is sometimes useful or helpful in life so if you're feeling afraid it's not necessarily that that means it's the wrong decision for you and it draws parallels with the forest as obviously being a place that's filled with for example poisonous mushrooms or scary animals or the ability to get lost or trip and so being fearful means being on your guard so you can look out for these red flags or these potential dangerous situations but it doesn't mean that just because you feel a little bit of trepidation about making a big life change or a little bit of fear or anxiety that doesn't mean it's the wrong choice for you so be careful that you're not confusing your intuition screaming no 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 this is wrong with just you feeling afraid about obviously making a big change and stepping into the unknown which is completely natural because your brain is designed to be terrified of change because that means that it's going into a situation that's unknown whereas if you stay in a bad situation your brain at least knows what the dangers are so that's why many people very sadly remain in abusive relationships or difficult situations in life because their brain is aware of the dangers and judges that to be safer than the unknown which might 
obviously be better um, just because it doesn't know what dangers lie in the unknown. So your brain sometimes can be your own worst enemy. Just to remind you of that group one, because I felt that that was the message coming through from that card. So I think we'll get a message from the masculine and feminine as well. The message from your inner masculine and feminine or from the masculine and feminine in this situation, perhaps. Take it how you want to take it. We'll start with the feminine. And we have Kuan Yin, compassion. Wow. Okay, so the feminine is coming through as Kuan Yin. And Lady Kuan Yin is extremely peaceful, extremely compassionate and unconditionally loving. So that's where the feminine is right now in this space of peace and love and real trust as well. Kuan Yin does not wear heart armor. She does not, you know, cover her heart to stop it from being attacked or anything like that she might be discerning in who she spends her time with and that doesn't mean that you have to put up with bad behavior but equally she doesn't berate herself for letting herself get hurt or for being hurt she just chooses to move on from that situation and forgive in time when she's ready so that could be connected to this sewer mermaid message and your message from the masculine in january is aries war now aries is Ares in the Greek tradition, Mars in the Roman tradition, so you might know him by a different name. And obviously war is referring to conflict or fighting or arguments, um, battle or defensiveness even. You might find that your inner masculine feels like it's trying to defend you a lot and that's where the fear is coming in and so that's making you feel triggered, whereas your inner feminine is this heightened peace and trying to balance that out. Um, you might find that a masculine that you're dealing with, for example, seems very argumentative, confrontational, defensive, or if you have dominant masculine energy within you, you know, we all have one or the other. It's very rare that it's a complete 50-50 split between us. Um, if you're a feminine with very dominant masculine energy, then this would be um, you feeling very defensive as a woman, feeling very much in sort of even fight or flight mode potentially or just in warrior mode survival mode fighting picking fights or arguments for no reason so just take that how it resonates obviously aries or mars is a very very powerful energy to have when we need it he would help us have a brilliant workout session at the gym he would help us to fight our way through a difficult situation he would help us to survive through some of the toughest times in our lives and to negotiate a very difficult um, conflict situation. But when he's always alert and always looking for arguments or always on the defensive, then it, it triggers the fight or flight or it triggers constant anxiety because it feels like we're always looking for that red flag or we're always looking for that danger. So sometimes he needs to stand down a little bit and just relax. So we have space clearing now again this could be to do with moving home feels like a lot of you are preparing to move in or, or really considering moving home or buying a house or moving across the country or something space clearing can obviously also be referring to you considering removing a person from your life or trying to tackle certain habits or thought patterns or emotional patterns that just aren't helpful for you let's use our last brand new deck from the lovely Kara. So we've got first breath, number 21, beginner's mind. Wow. So it is new beginnings. That's that ace of swords. And I love that it says first breath because the ace of swords is air energy. And I often refer to it as the breath of fresh air card. That feeling of sudden relief and clarity and ah, <sighs> when you've been in such a time of confusion and muddledness and, and darkness. I really like that. So we'll get you an archetype card for those of you that don't have a person in your life to see who's coming towards you in January, or it could just be representing you or your partner, if there is already someone in your life, your crush maybe, how you or them might be behaving in this month. Oops. 
Wow, angel. Light attributes. Helping those in need with no expectation of return. Shadow attributes. Acting innocent or angelic to mislead others. Falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance. So this to me would fit very well with the, the Divine Feminine, the Quan Yin energy who's coming through because she is very angelic in nature. That's her sort of energy and vibe. But obviously it could also be relating just to uh, someone coming your way. It might not be your inner feminine or the feminine in the situation. And your final card is Stupai Astarojna. And that makes so much sense with the forest witch message and the Aries and everything and the sewer mermaid. That means step carefully or tread carefully. And it is the 13 of diamonds. And as you can see, it's a little fox, but he appears to be almost underwater. And so tread carefully just means think through your every step very carefully. Make sure that you're aware of all the implications of everything that you're deciding to do or agreeing to do. Um, just so that you, you won't regret it later or you know that you've done something very thoroughly. You've done all your due diligence. I can't, leave, can't even speak. Due diligence. No. Due diligence. <laughs> And so on. So that's what that card is talking about. Be cunning as a fox. So let's move on to your charms now. Group one and then we'll do your dice as well. So let's see what's coming up for you in love in January. Any more messages? Okay, so we've got a couple of charms that have fallen down here, so they haven't landed on anything specifically. We've got the worry thread, which is just that worry and anxiety coming through again. And we've also got a fairy, which is symbolic of fairy energy, air elemental energy and magic being around you at this time. I can see the bat there, which is fear. So there's a lot of this going on for you. There's a lot of trepidation about the future. Um, and this is also the shadow self sort of rearing its head and needing to be worked through and processed. I do see Sagittarius over here. And we've also got Ambitious, which is the reverse of the Capricorn charm. So we've got Sagittarius and Capricorn coming through now as well. The cactus indicates survivor mode. Now this is very interesting because I mentioned survival mode with uh, Aries or Mars when you're always in fight or flight or you're just pushing through all of the difficulties and all of the challenges to make sure that you're still standing at the end of it. Um, so when you're sort of running on your basic stuff and not very much else, it can also be someone who won't let you get close to them or you kind of stopping people getting close to you if we go back to that intimacy issue um, because obviously cacti 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 are very prickly they don't let people in very easily um you've got to know how to handle them to get close to them we have the letter x coming through which could be indicative of a person's name or surname maybe or it could be a word or a place that's coming to mind obviously when i get that in a relationship reading i think of an x so dealing with issues relating to an ex relationship an ex partner maybe being on high alert in this relationship or in future relationships as a result of that but obviously the x can be anything else that comes to mind um it doesn't have to be the first letter of someone's name or surname for example as long as it's just a significant sound within their name we have got an interestingly an alice charm because you got the tarot in wonderland so this is a gambling charm this is about risk taking and this is so interesting given that you've gotten messages about fear and anxiety and um treading carefully so yeah be careful of the risks you take but I do think it's important to remind you that just because you're afraid of something doesn't mean that it's necessarily the wrong move for you so it's just asking yourself is this right for me is it just natural fear of change in the unknown or is it something more than that that's stopping me we've got the butterfly there which is liberation and evolution transformation the pumpkin symbolic of autumn time Maybe this is something you're preparing to do in autumn or you've met someone in autumn or something or something that happened back then is affecting you still. And we've got the movie camera. Okay, and that means things going on behind the scenes that either you're not aware of or that it's just not generally 
sort of public knowledge. So this could be the intimacy issues you are worried about, how that's going to work out with a partner and you're not really wanting to talk about it, but it is something that's in the back of your mind. So let's move on to your dice now as well, and then you can go and watch your gnome for your extra messages. So, wow, okay, we're rolling the eighth set of dice. So you guys are getting the Adventure Time dice, the brand new dice from the lovely Raj. So here they are. Let's see how many we're going to get. We'll do a pre-roll. Okay, that's a one, so I'm going to roll again. Whenever I get a one or a zero, I always roll again. Five. Okay, so five dice for you. Okay, so I'm definitely getting these symbols of fear coming through again. Okay, so we've got the Enchiridion, which in Adventure Time is this sort of book of power. I'm not going to obviously go into the, the details too much, but there's that. And then you've also got um, this demon guy. I've forgotten his first name. Someone will let me know in the comments. It's Marceline, the Vampire Queen's father. He's um, a demon from the Abyss. And you've also got this like entrance to a dark tunnel, which seems to have teeth carved out of it and it could be rock or it could be teeth who knows and all of these things to me are pointing towards fear and trepidation so obviously with this guy showing up as a demon king he can never be trusted um and i think that you're worried either because of an ex that was like this a manipulator or a narcissist or an actual sociopath and you're genuinely like i don't want that to happen again but i don't trust myself because i didn't see the signs before or i ignored the signs before and i'm worried about getting into that sort of situation again so there's that fear of taking the plunge and going into the dark unknown um obviously for some of you this could indicate that this is true this is someone that you are involved with and you should step away from probably who's very charming as well but I think the message I've been getting from this reading is mainly that a lot of you are, are just fearful of something happening again or fearful of making the wrong choice. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you are in that situation again or that you are making the wrong choice. It's just that you need to ask yourself, is this just normal fear or is this, you know, my instincts telling me something's wrong? So that's for your, obviously, for your own understanding. You need to make that call by yourself because I think it will be different for everyone. Um, but that's what I'm seeing. And we've got the fist bump, okay, that happens a lot on Adventure Time. And two people hugging and sort of reconciling or, uh, you know, maybe reconciling their, their differences, for example, and being friends again. So that's why I think this is going to end nicely for you and why a lot of you are probably fearful just as a result of your past. That doesn't mean it's wrong, um, but it's just rather than this being a repeat of the same, it's that it's the past being sort of brought back and triggered. So I do feel that there is going to be a positive end to January with regards to your relationships. I do see it being up and down, mainly within your own head, if I'm honest, or within your own emotions. It just feels very fluctuating, very sort of, I'm sure one moment and then the next day I'm full of anxiety. Um, but by the end of the month, you are definitely on track. You know what you want to do. You've made your choice. You're sticking to it. And that's that. So that's what I'm seeing in your main reading, Group 1. Thank you so much for being here with me. Now you can go back to the start of the video and choose your gnome, if you haven't already done that, or if you've forgotten which one you chose. If you have chosen already and you remember which one it was, then just jump to the timestamps and go to your gnome to get your extra messages. And I'm going to move on now to Group 2. Hey there, Group 2. Welcome to your reading. If you chose the beast and also the Tarot of the Divine. This is going to be your main reading and then the gnomes will give you basically some extra cards and also some channeled messages. So the way that I do this is it makes it more of a layered reading. It makes it feel more personalized to you um, and you can choose more than one pile or more than one gnome. It doesn't matter but it just makes the reading more personalized. So group two, I would love it if you could subscribe if you haven't already. That means that you get notified whenever I release a video and it also um, not only means that you don't miss out, but it also helps my channel um, as well. So let's see what's coming up for you in love in January.
Okay, so we have got the Ace of Pentacles. We've got the Five of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles, so lots of Pentacles energy. And wow, okay, <laughs> Seven of Pentacles. So there's probably some Earth energy uh, in your birth chart quite strongly, or maybe with the person that you're dealing with romantically, if there's someone that you have in mind. So that would be Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. So it's interesting. I see it as being like January almost feels like a waiting game. So the Ace of Pentacles shows me that you start off very well. There's either a relationship that has a very strong foundation that you're looking to build on or um, become more deeply connected to that person. Or you're just very positive about love when you start out the month and you're very clear on what you're looking for, what you're going to do to get it, etc. Then I see there's a little bit of anxiety here. Okay, so the Five of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles both refer to you maybe not being sure that you're able to actually follow through with what you said you would do with regards to love, or maybe there's, um, you know, the person that you're interested in, you can't spend very much time with them for whatever reason. They could be working a lot, there could be health concerns, it could just not work out that way um, for a couple of weeks, and you start to really worry that this is not going to work out. And so the Seven of Pentacles is like referring to a waiting game. It feels like maybe you've asked someone out and they get, maybe take a while to get back to you or, you know, you ask them out on a date and they take a while to finalize that. Or it could be that you um, are online dating, for example, and you send off a load of messages and it seems to take forever to find someone that you actually click with or who you can have an actual conversation with rather than just exchanging sort of, you know, meaningless internet small talk. So that's the vibe that I'm picking up on from your tarot. We'll move on to your oracle cards now. But um, it does feel like a waiting game and there could be frustration or anxiety there, as I said. So we have let your friends help you ask for and accept support from others. So when we get this card, this usually refers to you leaning on your friends for support. It could mean that you end up being introduced to someone through a friend um, or that your friends are helping you to improve your dating game or you get set up with someone by your friends or maybe you join online dating because your friends say you should and you all do it together and you know it's kind of like a bonding experience but there's also that underlying insecurity or anxiety there potentially as well. Okay, so then we have this card from the Lover's Oracle, which says Twin Flames, your passion ignites. So if you subscribe to the ideology surrounding Twin Flames and believe that to be true, then obviously that shows that you could be meeting a Twin Flame. But for me, that card is more just like either you're on the search for the, tr the one, like the one true love, or it means that you meet someone that you really, truly click with in this month. Like it's just a sudden connection or a very instant connection and it's very deep and it can be very intense as well and you're just like wow this is an excellent person <laughs> and I'm so pleased to have met them and I'm really interested to see where it goes but there could be a stalling or um, a need to wait between meetups or something for example it could be that you agree to meet up with someone that you've met online or that you've met in person and then a date gets cancelled for whatever reason and then that leaves you feeling worried or stressed and then it takes a while to reschedule it. It's that kind of vibe. Okay, so here we have got number 12, Flitterwochen honeymoon. We have number 67, compensation. Compensation. Number 40, Verbundenheit, sort of closeness and being bound up with each other, intimacy. And number 59, ein Problem als Spiegel der Beziehung, a problem as a mirror of the relationship. Okay, so an interesting mix of cards. So the honeymoon really makes a lot of sense to me. This shows me that you hit it off with someone straight away. And this could be someone you already met maybe in December or something. And you're carrying that energy into January. Or it could be someone you meet in the month of January. And it just feels like, wow, 
this person's amazing <laughs> and we have that incredible honeymoon phase where everything's perfect and you know you only see the good side of them and they you and um it's just that wonderful feeling where you're just high on love basically or high on lust and those intense feelings that come with a crush or getting to know a new person and um, Verbundenheit is obviously showing how you're very close to this person and you feel already very bonded with them. Even though you ever haven't known them very long, you feel very bonded with them. So that to me says that it could even be a past life connection or a soulmate connection, someone that you have shared previous experiences with, but just not in this lifetime. And then we have a problem as a mirror of the relationship and compensation. So it's like there is a problem and whether it's to do with this like waiting a long time to see each other or the cancelling of a date or like being silent for a week or so and then coming back whatever it is it's like you immediately see that as as a reflection of the dynamics of the relationship and that could absolutely be true um that could be this person kind of showing you how they really feel or showing you who they really are um but it like hits really deeply whatever it is and then we've got compensation which is either you working harder to compensate, working harder to win affection or attention, which is completely the wrong thing to do in terms of um, winning respect and winning that attention and affection. Or it could be this person sort of overcompensating for their, you know, whatever the the slight was that was perceived or the, the transgression, um, working hard to compensate for that. But then there's an undertone of either resentment or guilt there which obviously sort of tarnishes the connection a little bit so there is a complicated dynamic going on let's see what else we can get we'll use one of the new decks now okay so we have out trick or treating number five we're here and autumn is my last chance number six please don't lose hope okay so i whatever this problem is you know, I, and I really feel like you start to see it immediately as just confirmation that they don't really like you or that, you know, this is indicative of the dynamics of the relationship and that will never change, etc. An underlying disrespect that's never going to go away or whatever it is. I feel like it's not the case. And I understand completely that it, it's important that you always have, not necessarily have your guard up, but that you're always on alert for red flags and disrespect and any bad treatment, especially in the very early days of a relationship when everyone should be on their absolute best behavior and trying to impress and trying to, you know, show only their best side at all times. But I feel like whatever is going on here, there's a genuine reason for it. It's genuine, like they were actually ill when they canceled the date or they genuinely had like an emergency at work or something it wasn't something that they were just like oh I can't be bothered really or if there was some ghosting there was a real reason for it and that's not to say you still have to accept the behavior and you know completely your choice to to end the relationship or stop talking to this person if you want to but what these cards are telling me is that there's the possibility of salvaging it it's it's not over at that first strike if you don't want it to be Let's use one of the other new decks. Okay, that flew out very quickly. That's the Fire Witch. Number 20. I'm just going to take a quick look in the guidebook for this one. This isn't one that I've pulled in any of my private readings in the like day or two since I got this deck. So the Fire Witch makes temperatures rise. The pure fire of passion exercises demons and tests the content of the furnace of your love. She ignites masculine flames of love, bringing pleasures in desire. Two lovers understand each other's true hearts. You and your lover will exchange sweet words during hot, earthy passion. So, as I said before, it's very intense from the offset. It's a very intense connection, and that's where twin flames and the fire comes in, because, you know, even here, it's, a, it's an earth card, this seven of pentacles, but there's a big fire on it, and... It, it's showing fire and flame and passion and obviously that can be incredible in the sense that it's all consuming and it's amazing and it's so different from other things that you've experienced but it can also be destructive as well it can be all consuming in a negative sense so it's just trying to temper that a little bit and not let intense emotions rule your decision making and rule your ability to view this from a sort of detached logical standpoint
very good. Oh my goodness, flame of inspiration. Wow. So possibly some fire signs here as well, or people with very dominant fire in their birth charts, but it's just incredible how there's so many fire imagery and I can't believe that I just was talking about it and then pulled that card. So yeah, this connection really ignites the best parts of you and the worst parts of you. You know, it brings out all of your passion and all of your creativity and all of your you know, fire and emotion and devotion, but it also brings out your anger or your resentment or your shadow side, your fear, your insecurities. Wow. It is not for the faint of heart. Okay, so I really felt like I needed to get a message from the mermaids just to temper all of that fire. So from the water elementals we've got number 15 divination prophecy fate destiny future fortune so this really does feel like a destined connection and obviously that doesn't mean you have to remain with this person you never have to remain in a relationship that you are unhappy with or uncomfortable with and even if it's a fated meeting that doesn't mean that you have to do anything in particular it just means that you had to meet that person and experience their energy and see where that went you know, they might have a lesson to teach you and they might do that in a few hours. Um, you don't have to be around for years and years with someone that you have a fated meeting with. But that is super interesting. Wow. Group two, I'm actually wondering if you have something maybe in your birth chart like vertex in a fire sign. Let's get a message now from the... Um, masculine and feminine so this could be a message from your inner masculine and inner feminine you have both within you we all do we all pretty much have a dominant one usually it's quite rare that they're in perfect 50 50 harmony um, but that dominant masculine or feminine does not necessarily correlate with your biological sex so you will have met many women who have a dominant masculine typically very assertive very confident can be quite domineering sometimes or just very outgoing um you will have met men who have a dominant feminine as well who are more sensitive more quiet more broody more nurturing so this could either represent a message from the feminine and masculine in this situation so you would know which one you were based on your own personality or your dynamic within the relationship or it could be from the inner masculine and feminine within your own self so just take this however it resonates with you We'll start with a message from the feminine. Ladies first, group two. And we have Demeter, harvest. Okay, so Demeter is, uh, Demeter in the Roman uh, pantheon, but Keres in the Greek pantheon. No, she's not, is she? She's Demeter in the Greek pantheon and Keres in the Roman pantheon. Sorry, I'm being completely ridiculous but <laughs> Demeter is um, the goddess of the harvest and of agriculture but also of motherhood and we do have a Keres sign within our birth chart um, so it would be interesting to see where Keres is for you whether it's maybe in a fire sign um, or what other planets or asteroids are aspecting Keres for you. Keres shows how you nurture and how you want to be nurtured. It shows um, your relationship with your mother or to your own children if you are a woman who is going to be a mother. It shows also how you deal with grief because Demeter lost her daughter Persephone um, to the god Hades and so it shows how you deal with loss or grief as well. So let's get a message from the masculine now as well. Whoa. <laughs> the message from the masculine is Typhon, anger, rage. That is incredible. More fiery energy. Okay. So either the masculine in this situation is very much igniting this energy within the two of you, or it's your inner masculine that is experiencing these feelings of intense passion and I feel like it's also to do with like your insecurities as well. It feels as though jealousy is very easily triggered in this relationship or it feels as though 
anger at being slighted or being ghosted is very very easily triggered so it's a really intense like emotional roller coaster of a relationship but that is so interesting Demeter and Typhon and they're very different as well I mean Demeter obviously she's not someone you want to mess with like she can <laughs> she can withhold that nourishment and that nurturing very very easily if she wants to um but her and Typhon like you would never put them together would you so there's definitely a mismatch here or a difficulty in finding harmony is what I'm seeing. Let's use the last new deck. Okay, so here we have got Drifter, number 14, experiencing life as it comes. And Dust Devil, number 15, moving out of stagnation. I mean, you're definitely moving out of stagnation because there's so much here about propelling yourself forward and this relationship feels like it goes from zero to like 60 or zero to 100 in like that like it just moves so quickly or the intensity is so strong that you just feel like you have no control <laughs> over the situation and obviously the fire burns through anything that's stagnant to make room for the new so up until now you might have felt like you were drifting And then this just shakes up your whole experience of life. But at the same time, if this person pulls back or if this relationship seems to be slipping away, it terrifies you and it leaves you feeling like you've got nothing outside of this relationship. And that's a very dangerous place to be in. So it is like playing with fire emotionally, group two. So you want to be careful with this one, absolutely. I'm going to get you an archetype card now to see who this person is who's coming towards you or if it's someone you already know then it's just showing how you or this person will be behaving um, in this month or what your attitude is towards love in general in this month. Okay we've got child divine. Light attributes are innocence, purity, and redemption, suggests a special connection with the divine. Shadow attributes are an inability to defend oneself against negative forces. And I do really sense that you feel helpless in this relationship. You feel so swept away by all of the emotions or like just the suddenness of the connection, the swiftness, the velocity of it, that you feel like what has even happened? And we have Idina Sviet. Go into the light, <laughs> stepping into the light. That's the 13 of arrows. And you can see there's this sort of either deep sea diver or spaceman who is walking forwards into the light. So there is going to be increased clarity. And I feel like you just need to ask yourself, where are my boundaries in this situation? Where are my expectations? I need to be very, very clear on this because this is such an intense connection that I don't want to be swept away by it. Um, yes, we clearly have a lot of areas where we're very, very compatible, but we also have areas where we clash quite dramatically, quite spectacularly, and we need to work around that or walk away. So that's what I am seeing here. We'll move on to your charms and dice now to get your extra messages. And then obviously you can go on to your gnome as well. So while I was shuffling, we got this um, black obsidian ball jump out of the, the tin. And the black obsidian ball points towards clarity. It's understanding a situation where there has been um, confusion or deception or any sort of obfuscation. It's getting that clarity and that understanding. Okay, we've got love is in the air with the hummingbird. So there's definite, as I said, very intense passion. There's helpful person here with... The dolphin, and so I'm guessing that's referring back to your let your friends help you card. We've got the rocking horse. 
that's just jumped out of my hand. So the rocking horse is where a situation seems to be going backwards and forwards and not improving or making any sort of progress. But with the frog, it's showing that you are prepared to make a leap. You're prepared to make a decision. So either general life circumstances or this other person are what's stopping it from moving forward or what's stalling it or making it feel stagnant. Definitely rely on your friends for support. We've even got a letter F there, which could be related to friends. Obviously, it could also be this person's name or it could be a word or a place that comes to you. The F doesn't have to be the first letter of the word or the name. It can just be a significant letter within um, that word. Just take whatever comes to you with that. We've got teamwork with the hockey sticks there. It's so important that this is an equal partnership. Loyalty. This person could also be born in the Chinese year of the dog, given that we've got that little dog sign there. We've got elephant, learning from your past mistakes, taking things one step at a time and crossing each bridge when you come to it. So that's sort of like the drifter message of experiencing life as it comes, but making sure that you're integrating wisdom from past mistakes or past experiences. We've got the feminine little girl landing here on flame of inspiration so it's the feminine that's ignited the feminine that is really experiencing this fire the most deeply or the most intensely it is really making me think of dido though so that's why i really want to tell you if you are the feminine to please be on your guard because dido in the um in the aeneid is set alight with the fires of passion which burn through her very bones and um sort of make her completely at the mercy of her love for Aeneas and she ends up killing herself in spectacular fashion which is just symbolic of how she can't move on after that love has been taken away from her so it's like a very strong woman a queen in fact being driven completely into nothingness by an intensely passionate love affair um, and that's what I want to caution you about is not making this the absolute everything in your life and not making another person's moods dictate your own happiness or your own feelings making sure that you have that sense of grounding and contentment within your own self because this is so intense that it could so easily become destructive or be able to as I said knock you off your perch like take over your life massively and it's so important to keep your feet very firmly planted on the ground and that's why I think we got so many pentacles cards at the beginning of your reading to remind you of that we've got another <laughs> we've got a dragonfly which is a fire elemental and it's also a symbol of good luck which is nice we've also got the eiffel tower which is a symbol of france that could be where the f is coming from it's anyone with a french name or surname french family history someone who speaks french or comes from a french speaking country or maybe works for a french company or one that's owned by a french speaking company or travels there a lot or has interest in french cuisine or clothing or culture anything like that and obviously that's not going to be for everyone but that's a special confirmation for those of you for whom that fits and then we've got the cat that's got the cream very satisfied lots of contentment so yeah there's wow there are no words honestly group two for the intensity of this connection Let's get your dice. So we are going to be rolling the first set of dice for you, and those are the fantasy dice. These ones. Just do your pre-roll. Okay, that's a zero, so I'm going to be rolling again. Whenever I get a, a zero or a one on this pre-roll, I always roll again. Okay, seven. So we're going to roll seven of these dice for you, which is nearly all of them because there's only nine. Ooh, okay, that one flew out. Wow. Okay, so two of them actually flew out before I even had a chance to... Um, <laughs> throw them out myself so the first one is the trojan horse and that is super interesting because obviously we got the rocking horse so they're two like obviously very symbolic horse images and the trojan horse is when there are hidden motivations or ulterior motives or when you don't have all of the information in a situation or when your intuition is kind of telling you one thing but you're doing the complete opposite for whatever reason 
Um, what I find interesting is you seem to have quite a lot connected to uh, Greek and Roman literature and mythology, because obviously I got that channeled message about Dido. We've got Demeter and Typhon, and we've got the Trojan horse, and now also the Minotaur. So I don't know if there's some strong connection to Greek and Roman mythology, but this is what I'm seeing like coming through very strongly. So the Minotaur typically refers to someone who is kind of an enemy or someone who is blocking our path. So there could be a third party in this situation, or you could feel like you're behaving like your own worst enemy, for example, or that this person, you kind of swing between love and hate because it's such an intense emotion. And obviously love and hate are actually quite close to each other on the spectrum of emotions. They both are almost obsessive fixation on a person and very intense um, emotions towards them. So it's it's very easy to switch from love to hate, especially if you're someone who feels things very deeply or is very passionate by nature. So be aware of that. We do have the demon showing up as well. So that's battling with demons or insecurities or the shadow side of ourself popping up and being held up like a mirror as a result of this relationship. We have to stare at it in the face. We can't get away from it because this relationship shows us that shadow self which can obviously be frightening or it can be very confronting so be aware of that there's a very spiritual side to this connection we've got the monk there it sort of um behoves you as a result of this relationship to do a lot of self-reflection and thinking about yourself and your nature and your upbringing maybe your past it all sorts of is churned up by this relationship. Be aware of putting anyone or any situation or relationship on a pedestal. That never works out well because the person who's on the pedestal is in a very precarious position. Um, it stops a proper bond forming and the person who has put someone on a pedestal is always um, blinded by that view and obviously can feel very small in comparison. We've got the magician or the wizard, the ability to make strong decisions and changes for yourself and the wishing well, making a wish, a wish being granted, a wish coming true. It's lovely to have um, that dice. So group two, I don't even know what to say beyond what I've already said. Just be very, very careful of the choices you make. And um, I guess this whole situation, because it can be so intense, it can swing from one extreme to the other. So be very careful to make sure that you're remaining grounded, that you are trying to maintain a logical detachment from the situation when it comes to decisions um, and have fun with it and enjoy it as much as you can. So that's your main reading. And now you can go back to the start of the video and choose your gnome if you haven't done that already or if you've forgotten which one you chose. If you have chosen a gnome already and you remember which one it was, then just jump to the timestamps to get your extra messages. And I'm going to move on now to pile number three. Hi there, group three. Welcome to your reading. If you chose Lumiere and the Ramses Tarot of Eternity, then this is going to be your reading or your main reading, I should say, because you've got your extra messages and uh, channeled messages as well coming through from your gnomes. And the way that I do these readings for the monthly love predictions is when you pick a pile and a gnome, it makes it like a, a layered reading and it means that it, it feels more personalized to you. It's fine to choose more than one pile or more than one gnome um, if you're struggling to choose. So group three, love life in January. I would love it if you could subscribe as well, group three, if you haven't already. That means that you get notified whenever I release a new video so that you never miss out on anything that I post. And it also really helps out my channel as well. Okay, so let's look at your tarot. So we've got the Queen of Cups. We have also got the Ten of Pentacles, the Hanged Man, and the Ace of Cups. So we've got a lot of cups and um, also Pentacles and the Hanged Man as well. So Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces showing up in your reading so far. I love that you've got the Ace of Cups and also the Ten of Pentacles because that shows that there is love for you in January. And it feels quite positive. It feels healthy. Um, the one thing I would say is that obviously the hanged man in this particular deck is a slave. Um, they're chained up and working to build possibly the pyramids, for example. And we've got the queen of cups 
looking very desperate in this particular deck. She's making an offering to the goddess Hathor for love. She really wants love. Um, so it could be that you feel a bit desperate in this month in, at some points in love, or it could be that you feel as though your partner is very needy or very demanding of your time and energy. Um, that's just something to be on the lookout for. I don't think it's major because the Ten of Pentacles is very healthy and the Ace of Cups is also very positive. But I'm just pointing that out for those of you that do resonate with that message. So let's get your Oracle cards. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. Well, that's very lovely and it fits so nicely with the Ace of Cups because that's often about new love or a renewed feeling of love for your partner or loved one. So you could have your head turned in January. You could really be into a new person or just feel like a new sort of lease of life with regards to love, just really renewed and excited about love. The Hanged Man is telling me that you have been doing a lot of thinking and reflection and also the Queen of Cups in this context, the way that it's portrayed in the deck could also mean that you have been sort of communing with your spiritual team, your higher self, your patron deities, the angels with regards to love and how you experience and relate to love in this lifetime and um, maybe what I think this came out for Groupon as well, but where your significant love placements are in your birth chart, what sign and house are your, for example, Venus, Moon, um, Mercury sign, your uh, Eros, your Psyche, your Juno, for example, Lilith, all of those things, and what other planets and asteroids are aspecting them and in what way, and what that means for how you relate to love. So there is self-reflection going on. But it's almost like that makes you feel empowered because now you've got the information. Now you know you're empowered. So we have this card from the Lover's Oracle, which says, look deep within your heart and you will feel my love. My love for you is as deep as the ocean. Wow. So there is either someone that is showing you a lot of love and care and attention in this month or that you feel so strongly towards another person and you just really want to tell them because you care so much about them. Then here we have got number 89, Verschwörung, Conspiracy. We have number 76, Projektion, Projection. Number 90, Wutanfall, Attack of Anger. And number 59, Ein Problem als Spiegel der Beziehung a problem as a mirror of the relationship. So interesting vibe going on here with uh, conspiracy and Wutanfall, anger attack or like sudden period of anger. It feels as though there are some things that you don't quite trust with regards to love or even a particular connection. It's like you feel as though in relationships in your life, the same things have always been going wrong or you've been experiencing the same sorts of dynamics and that makes you angry because it feels like there's nothing you can do about it. It's outside of your control. It's, you know, the fault of your partners or just life in general. And projection is when you're very worried about how you come across or you're hyper-conscious of how other people view you in your own opinion. Um, like what you think they, they view you as or how you think they regard you. And so that's all like very hyper-aware of relationships and the dynamics and how you come across and that's where I think the hanged man is coming in of you being very aware of this and I think you've been doing a lot of consideration of it in January and possibly even prior to that in the weeks and months leading up to it and then we have a problem as a mirror of the relationship so when a problem seems to be a literal like all-encompassing hint as to how these relationships have their dynamics or what the feelings are within the relationship on both sides so it's like you're very, very aware 
of red flags of anything that's like encroaching upon your boundaries you're very aware maybe of the feelings that are betrayed by certain actions or certain words and it feels like this this awareness as i said before feels like it gives you empowerment because it's all learned as a result of past experiences and observations and you might have been reading things about uh, psychology or as I said your birth chart or relationships in general to feel more in control. So we're going to use one of the new decks now. Okay. So we've got the three fates, number 26, what comes around. Number 28, death and the maiden, invasion, boundaries violated, dominance. So that brings us back to that uh, chained up imagery of the hanged man. And number 24, lantern fairy, a clear solution. Okay, so yeah, we've got karmic issues here. We've got like a deep understanding of past experiences and karma we have got a a very clear acknowledgement of when boundaries are being encroached upon, as I said, and when um, red flags are showing up, and also an understanding of your attachment style or your personality type or your love language and how much space you need in a relationship and how you show and express love and how you want to receive love. And all of these things are very much on the forefront of your mind in January because you want to improve the quality of your relationships. And the Lantern Fairy is like, now that you have that knowledge and wisdom, you know exactly what you can do. So it could be that you're in a relationship um, where you feel disrespected or you feel like your boundaries are constantly being violated and the clear solution is either to talk about it if they're going to be receptive to it and set down your boundaries clearly or to walk away and maybe that's what you want to do in January um, and then we've got new love as well or it could be that you're going into a relationship and you're determined to be very very clear about love or you're just thinking about future love and you're thinking this is how it's going to be this is how it's going to be So from another of the new decks, we've got number two, the Silver Moon Witch. So I'll just check the guidebook for that one because I only got this deck a couple of days ago and it hasn't come out in any of my private readings that I've used it with. So the Silver Moon Witch, the feminine moon witch, the mistress of women, turns the tide of time in your favour. The next new or full silver moon will reveal your progress. A full moon magnetizes water into waves, so choose your moment to question whether you are swimming with the tide. Happy days will arrive spontaneously. Like the rhythmic moon, increase is followed by decrease in a never-ending cycle. Wow. And I like how that's landing next to the lantern fairy because they're both like a light in the darkness, a guiding light that shows you the way. And obviously you chose Lumiere as well, and he is a candelabra. He's a light in the darkness as well really really interesting so the next full moon or new moon is going to give you a big change or realization with regards to your relationship or with regards to how you um, relate to love we have transparency number two honest authentic genuine present so as i said you're very clear about what you want that's also the second number two right next to each other. You're determined to be clear. You're not going to pretend everything's okay anymore just to appease someone else. Spring. Okay, so that's lovely. Spring refers obviously to um, new experiences, new beginnings. growth out of a time of winter we're going to get a message now from your from the masculine and feminine and this could be your inner masculine and feminine we all have both within us typically one is dominant um it's very rare that we have a 
perfect 50 50 split of masculine and feminine energy your dominant energy does not necessarily correlate to your biological sex so you may be a woman who has very strong masculine energy or you may be a man with dominant feminine energy um so this could be from your inner masculine and feminine or it could be a message from the masculine and feminine within this situation so um obviously you know which one you are in this situation if we're talking about another person and you either because of your personality or because of the dynamics in the relationship you'll know which one you are so ladies first let's get the message from the feminine okay we have Allah morality interesting so the message from the feminine is to do with trying to do the right thing so either the feminine in this situation is very concerned with doing the right thing and being all above board and you know having the moral high ground and not doing anything that they're going to regret later or be able to look back on and think i could have handled that better or it's your inner feminine just sort of telling you this is where i stand right now this is where i am and where i'm focused on whoa okay um we're gonna take all of these but it seems like the masculine is is quite dominant here either within yourself or in uh the relationship that you're in currently ra power wow okay so straight off the bat we've got ra and power then we have helios cycles very interesting given that we got the silver moon witch which was talking about the cycles of the moon and how an increase a time of plenty is always followed by a decrease a time of lack or a time of quietness and hypnos sleep just literally coming in to represent that um, decrease there so the masculine is taking many forms um, this could indicate that there's more than one person in your life right now if you're not the masculine um, or it could just be that your masculine is very strong and it's coming out very in a very multifaceted way. Um, so Ra, obviously, power. And both Ra and Helios are sun gods. So that sort of intensifies their masculine power. I don't know maybe if group three you've been working on healing your inner masculine or strengthening the divine masculine within yourself because this feels like uber strong. Um, but yeah, wow. So yeah, cycles, as we said, we've sort of covered that. Um, and maybe if you're the masculine, there might be times where you feel like I'm really into this connection and then uh, I really can't be bothered or I'm really sort of like, you know, losing the interest a little bit. It feels a bit samey. It feels a bit boring. And then you sort of regain that a little bit. There's a need for rest and alone time with hypnos, sleep, rest, relaxation, the need to recharge, essentially, the need for space. And for everything to not be full on all of the time, to not have so many expectations being placed upon you and raw power being in your power. The masculine is in his power. This is not like a wounded masculine. This is not a weak or toxic masculine. This is a strong and healthy, vibrant masculine. Okay. Sorry, I just dropped a card there, but... I'm not going to take it because I did actually genuinely drop it. So this is the last new deck. And we have Feast of Plenty, number 20, choices and their consequences. So just like we were talking with like the waxing moon or the full moon, the time of plenty, um, it's followed by a decrease and obviously I like how it's it's talking about choices and their consequences because that's what the fates were talking about with karma what goes around comes around and this card was also mentioning something about be careful of whether you're swimming with the tide or against it so that's really really interesting and morality obviously as well karma consequences decisions let's get you an archetype card to see who's coming towards you in love in January or it could be so it could be this new love or it could be how you or your partner is behaving in this month or it could just be your general attitude towards love in january take it how it resonates with you and your situation OK, 
Okay, so we actually have two. We've got Networker, Light Attributes, Enhances Unity Through the Sharing of Information, Engenders Social Awareness and Empathy, Shadow Attributes, Conveys Information Only for Personal Gain, Spreads Fear and Falsehood. And we have Guide. Light Attribute represents the nature of the divine in life and in yourself. Shadow Attribute places financial gain and control over imparting spiritual insight. It's interesting how we've got Guide when we've also got Morality. So, as I said, take that how that resonates with you. And then we have Nabirai... Sorry, can't even see it properly on the camera, can we? Nabirai Visoto. And this means gain height. So, obviously, it is a uh, hot air balloon rising up in the sky. It's the seven of arrows, um, if that means anything to you. And Nabirai Visoto is gain height. So, it's either trying to detach to gain perspective from this situation and obviously you have quite a lot to do with like light and celestial bodies the sun and the moon like obviously a high position uh, a high perspective but also it can be about just an increase or an improvement or success or going up a level in some way and that would fit with the messages about um, power and transparency and decisiveness and newness and new beginnings so we will move on now to your charms and your dice, group three, to get your extra messages. Okay, so <laughs> quite a lot of things going on here. We've got Sagittarius energy showing up. We have also got an angel feather. So angelic energy is very strongly around you. We've got a lion, which represents Leo's energy and can also be a warning against pride. Okay, now it's interesting because when I said this isn't a toxic masculine, I wanted to say it was a very strong, proud masculine. So that could be something to be aware of. You might have been strengthening your inner masculine and that's great that it's become strong and vibrant, but it could have become proud as well. Um, or it could just be representative of the masculine in this situation being a little bit proud, um, a bit stubborn, etc. So this one sort of flew out, I think, before I, I pulled the, the dice, the charms myself. And this is the apple and that represents healthy relationships, healthy connections. So again, that's very positive. We have insight with the binoculars, a great understanding of what's going on, self-analysis as well. We have the letter O. It's interesting because it could be like a full moon or a, or a new moon, couldn't it? Um, given that it landed on that card, but also the O is just referring to a person or a word maybe a place. It doesn't have to begin with O, but as long as O is like a significant sound or letter within that word or name or place, just take whatever comes to you with that. We have got the honeybee on the honeycomb, and that means hard work leads to sweet rewards. And I do think you've been working hard in terms of ruminating over what love means to you and who you are as a person and all of these things. We have the dog, very alert, the way that it's standing, that's an alert stance. So it's you being very aware of what you need and what you want, being willing to communicate that. It's assertiveness as well. And it can refer to anyone born in the Chinese year of the dog as just like another zodiac marker. We've got the hairdryer there, blowing hot and cold. Uncertainty. I did actually get the message that it could actually literally be about hair for some of you. Maybe there's like a, an issue going on with your hair right now. You're changing it or there's some insecurity. Like I don't normally get that message from the hairdryer. It's literally like blowing hot and cold uncertainty or um, being a bit wishy-washy for me. But I just got that as a message. So um, it's, it's possible that that is a message for some of you, <laughs> something to do with the hair. And then we've got the uh, Russian doll. So connections to Russia, people who have a Russian name or surname, people who speak Russian or come from a Russian speaking country, who have family history there or who maybe work, do business with Russia or have interest in the language or the culture. Um, 
that's not going to be a message for all of you, obviously, but it's a confirmation for those of you for whom it is a message. And it's also symbolic of not bottling up your feelings and just painting on a happy face and pretending everything's okay. So that fits very well with the transparency message. So we'll do your dice now as well, group three. And we're rolling the fourth set of dice, the Looney Tunes dice. These ones. Let's just do your pre-roll. And we're rolling seven of them for you. Okay. Okay, interesting. So we have got going up a level with this platform dice there, which fits very well with this card, Nabirai Vesotu. Um, we've also got the plunger, which fell out before I could even throw the dice myself. So that's obviously about unblocking a situation that has become stuck or stagnant. We've got the disguise. So that is about, as I said before, fighting through the desire to mask to paint on a, a happy face and pretend it's all okay to lie even um it's all about transparency here we've got the carrot which is another symbol of health healthiness in a relationship so the carrot and the apple that's very very positive this isn't like a toxic situation it's just one where you are like literally i want to be 100 percent clear here i want to be very like forthright and forward with what I need to say. We've got the person who is like sawing through through the floor. Um, this always makes me think of having the rug pulled from under you, like when you have a sudden realization or when a situation changes very suddenly and unexpectedly. We have granny, could refer to an older woman or the feminine maybe being older or maybe more mature in this situation. And also Sylvester. And it's interesting because Granny and Sylvester are obviously part of the same family, part of the same storyline in, in Looney Tunes. Like, not all of the characters interact with each other, but Granny and Sylvester do. Sylvester's her pet cat, but Sylvester always feels second best to Tweety. Okay, Tweety is her other pet, who is a little bird. Sylvester hates him, and because he's a cat, he's always trying to kill him <laughs> or harm him because he feels like second best or a failure or not good enough when Tweety's around, you know, sort of fighting for Granny's affection. So it could be that there's a third party that's making someone feel jealous here or someone feel like a loser or not, like they're not getting enough affection. If there is, it's not coming through very strongly in the cards. It could just be that there's one person who always feels not good enough or like whatever they do is not enough. Um, and so there's definitely maybe a conversation to be had in this month or just clarity as to what you expect with regards to relationships. So that's what I'm seeing, a lot of progress and a lot of insight in this month and a very, very strong masculine who's very, very secure in their masculinity or very sure of themselves. Um, that's your inner masculine or it's the masculine in this situation. So that's your main reading, group three. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now you can go and choose your gnome. If you haven't already, go back to the start of the video and choose your gnome. It's fine to choose more than one. Or if you have already chosen and you remember which one it was, then just jump to the timestamps and um, jump to your gnome. And I'm going to move on to gnome A or Gizmond now. So if you chose him, then you can just stick around for a few seconds. Hey there, Gizmond's group. Everyone who chose Gizmond or Gnome A as your gnome, this is going to be your extra messages to give the reading a more layered, personalized feel. So we're going to get a few cards from the Tarot of the Gnomes, and then we're also going to get a Elfen Öffnen Herzen card, Elves Open Hearts, um, because they're Earth Elemental cards. And then we will also get your channeled messages as well. So I'm just going to shuffle the tarot deck while I open up to your channeled messages. I find that that helps me to concentrate on the messages coming in. So Gizman's group. I am seeing like a beach sunset. So that to me says like the ending of a situation or the ending of a chapter, which is obviously followed by the sunrise and the, the new beginning, the new experience. I'm seeing like muesli as well, or, or porridge, like someone on some kind of healthy eating kick. There's a desire to improve 
the appearance of the body and the overall health. So that could be connected to your feelings of security within relationships or your ability to uh, attract others in the sense of physical attraction. But that's something that seems to be a focus here. I'm getting the colors white and gray coming through. And I just heard purity as well. So it's like maybe you're trying to, to cleanse the, the body and mind. You're um, recognizing your innocence in a situation or moving on from a situation where you felt uh, blamed and nothing was actually your fault. Yeah, I'm hearing like just keep picking yourself up every time you fall down. Just dust yourself off. This is just what I'm hearing. And I'm also getting like a deep blue color. So that's the color of like reflection and peace and meditation. So there's definitely a lot of, of reflection or self, self anal analysis going on. An analysis of the past. Like I, I'm really just getting like quite a quiet vibe from this pile. So it's like um, you're doing a lot of thinking, a lot of reflecting. Um, you're thinking about past experiences and you're looking forward to moving on and you're putting those those steps in place but it's a very quiet uh, feeling in January so let's get your cards so we've got Vasmyorka Maniet the eight of pentacles and it says Biednost poverty we've also got Shestyorka Chash the six of cups Svatba, wedding, and Imperatrice, the Empress. Okay, lovely. So um, definitely the Eight of Pentacles is referring to the hard work that you're putting in with regards to either finding love or getting ready for love or moving on from difficult past love. Like I really see that as being a strong focus for you or something that you're putting in a lot of um, time and energy into in this month and it's possible that it's to do with working through insecurities or working through reasons why you think past relationships have failed or just sort of giving yourself the best possible chance that you can have with regards to love the six of cups obviously the key word wedding there is very nice and very positive the six of cups refers to situations from your past being very prominent in this month so as i said a lot of reflection on the past the Six of Cups is also past life situations and karmic issues. So that's also at the forefront. And then Imperatrice, again, is um, really taking care of your body. Like the Empress is, is loving the physical self and is loving physical health. And it's your ability to be sensual and open and to um, be yourself una unafraid, unashamed, absolutely unapologetically it's not being afraid to let people in to be intimate um it's your ability to attract people towards you and to create the life that you want let's get you your oracle card as well okay so just hold this nicely in front of the camera so this says in jeder blüte träumt gott einen wunderschönen traum lass auch du deine träume blühen so this says in every blossom god dreams a beautiful dream let yourself also sorry let let your dreams also bloom so that works very very well with the empress in the sense of opening and creativity and allowing yourself to flourish and be healthy and grow and attract what you want towards you to create to allow other people in there's an intimacy feeling there whether you think of the the blossom that's like a bud that's closed and then it gradually opens up it's allowing people to see what's inside allowing people to see um, its own beauty and not being tempted to hide that away and it's just so, so lovely. It's connecting to your actual worth. It's reminding yourself, this is what I deserve. This is who I am. I will not be silenced. I will not dim my light. I will not hide away or pretend that I'm not my beautiful self. You know, I will not pretend to be ugly because I know that I'm not. Um, and it's, it's really lovely. So there's a lot of self-acceptance coming for you in love in January. And that has a wonderful knock-on effect for the relationships in your life and your approach to love more generally. And definitely improved health is going to help you as well because um, that will have an emotional knock-on effect. 
So Gizman's group, that's what I'm seeing in your January. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of uh, this video, whether it resonated with you. Please also like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video as well, because that helps me to get seen more on YouTube and it helps us to get these messages to as many people as possible. Thank you again for everyone who has sent in a gorgeous gift for my birthday and thank you to all of you lovely subscribers. Thank you to all of my patrons as well. If you would like to be a patron, head over to Patreon. Um, all of the links are in the description box and in my comment in the comments section. If you would like to send a new deck or something to the channel as a gift, then there's a link to do that. There's two wish lists that I have uh, for you to do that. I also have a PayPal link for tips and donations to support the work that I do. You can become a patron and get access to exclusive content, extra picker cards, healing sessions, giveaways, and all of the kinds of things that I do. You also get to have your say on things like new, new decks that we get for the channel and things like that. And you get to know me a bit better over there. You can book a private reading or a healing session with me over on Etsy. You can also get your guardian angel information over there from me. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram, you will get daily oracle cards in your feed. Love it if you would head over there and consider following me. And if you would like to get 10% off beautiful crystal jewelry with free international shipping, then head over to Modern Day Manifestations. The link is in the description. The discount code is violet to use to get 10% off your first order. I really recommend them. Beautiful bracelets, beautiful jewelry. They do Apple watches as well. Um, and I'm sure there's something there for everyone. So thank you so much for being here. Have a lovely January and a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Take care. Hey there, Gunfalds group. Everyone who chose Gunfald or Gnome B as your gnome, welcome to your extra messages. These are going to be channeled messages and a few extra cards. We'll get some Tarot of the Gnome cards. We'll also get um, a card from the Elfen Öffnen Herzen deck, Elves Open Hearts. It's an Earth Elemental deck that I love using. And this will just make it feel like a more layered, personalized reading for the love predictions for January. So I'm just going to shuffle the tarot deck while I open up to your channeled messages because that helps me to focus in my mind rather than just sitting with my arms still. So group two, Gunfalz group. Okay, I'm seeing like, firstly I saw stone and then I saw a mountain, okay? So it's it's telling me like like small steps towards what it is that you're trying to accomplish. You're taking these small steps. Um, it might feel like an uphill battle at times, but you are gonna get there. I am hearing keep going. I'm hearing um, like it's it might be a fight, but it's worth it. Um, with regards to stone, obviously that's referring to the earth element, but stone is like, I find stone very soothing and very comforting, but obviously it's also very hard. It doesn't really expand or or do much. It's it's something that you know you, you get you have the phrase trying to get blood out of a stone, like something that is very stubborn or won't move or is very firm and rigid. Um, so that could be someone's attitude towards love, either you or your partner, maybe or your crush. In January, there could be a bit of a, a trying to figure out what's going on behind that harsh exterior. I'm also seeing a wolf now. So it could be to do with the thrill of the chase, the pursuit of love being really exciting in January. It could also be a warning against someone who may seem, you know, like a wolf in sheep's clothing, someone who may seem like they're all that, but in, in actual fact, they're, they're a manipulator or they're someone who has just got a sense of false charm, but isn't all they seem. Yeah, black and white. Black and white are the colours coming through for you. It's like these strong contrasts or this very clear understanding of what's right and what's wrong for you. It's like you're you're not prepared to give space for nuance in January because you just don't have time for it. It's like you're either right or you're not. If you cross me, that's it. You're gone. <laughs> I haven't got time to be dealing with people who are like, you know, dilly-dallying or sort of in the grey area of I'm not really sure. It's like you're in or you're out, basically. And I'm going to make that call. That's that's how I'm feeling. It's very like I'm seeing a boardroom now. Like it's literally like I'm I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to take my chances here or, um, you know, lay myself open to be hurt. I'm just you get like 
maybe two chances and that's it or maybe you don't even get that i'm also seeing a red car like a really quite a flashy car i don't know if you're saving for a car or maybe there's someone that's going to have like a really big expensive looking car and you either are impressed by that or you're really really not maybe it's like you know you're just really not turned on by status symbols you really sort of roll your eyes and massively think less of someone for flashing that kind of thing about with regards to you let's get your cards so here we've got Vasmyorka uh, Chash, the Eight of Cups, and it says Obshestvinaya Jizn, public life. We have also got Vasmyorka Miche, so the Eight of Swords, so two eights right next to each other, and this says Praktika, practice. Then you have Troika Chash, the Three of Cups, Pastayanstva, perpetuity, or constancy, and Divyatka Bulav, the Nine of Wands, and it says Nakazanya punishment so what's interesting is you've got the two eights which obviously are naturally linked to the in the infinity symbol and then you've got postayanstva perpetuity constancy it's like you're not willing to just go round and round with someone anymore you're not willing to put up with the same old crap you're not getting into the same old dynamics again you want a change with regards to love it's like i'm not doing this again i feel like i've been here before and that's it you're gone um you know, it can seem a bit brutal at times, it can seem like you're punishing people, but you're just in that warrior mode and you're not prepared to let anyone disrespect you or not fulfill your expectations. With public life, that's kind of pointing again to me, like you don't care how someone appears in society, you don't care about status symbols, you're not even focused on like money or what job they do or anything, you're looking deeper than that, you're looking to their personality and their values and how that fits with you and your life and if it doesn't fit they're just gone like I really feel like you're just not holding back in January you're not taking any prisoners you're just like no I haven't got time for this I don't care I haven't got the energy just goodbye yeah literally Bleibe realistisch. Stay realistic. You're just staying realistic. You're staying very focused on your goals, uh, very aware of what it is that you're looking for, what you will and won't accept. You're just so clear, <laughs> so, so clear in January, uh, Gunvard's group. You, you've you done all of the thinking and analysis that you need to do and you just, you know what you want, you know what you don't want, etc. And you're not going to be bullied. You're not going to be pushed around. You're not going to be persuaded to anyone's point of view. This is it. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing in your reading today. Uh, Gunfeld's group, I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments uh, if you did, if the reading resonated with you. And please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this reading. It really helps me to get seen more on YouTube and it helps us to get these messages to as many people as possible as well. And do check out my comment in the comments section or the description box below because they are full of links. So if you would like to send a gift to the channel like the lovely people who <laughs> remembered my birthday, um, then there's links there to do that. I've got my wish lists there. I've got my PayPal link for tips and donations as well, which support the work that I do. I would love it if you would consider becoming a patron. Head over to my Patreon page if you would like to get access to exclusive content, including extra picker cards and healing sessions and giveaways and other things that I do. Follow me on Instagram for daily oracle cards. Head over to my Etsy page if you would like to book a private reading or a healing session with me or get information about your guardian angel. Um, and if you would like to get 10% off beautiful handmade crystal jewelry with free worldwide shipping, then head over to Modern Day Manifestations. Use the link in the description to validate the discount code, which is VIOLET. Use discount code VIOLET at checkout and you will get 10% off your first order and I thoroughly recommend them. And yeah, have a lovely rest of your day, Gunfeld's group. Have a wonderful January and take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Hey there Gaia's group, welcome to your reading if you chose Gaia or Gnome C. As your gnome, this is going to give you your extra messages, your channeled messages, and a few extra cards. This is going to be, basically it makes the reading more layered, it makes it feel more personalized for you. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up to your channel messages first and to do that I'm going to be shuffling the tarot deck because I find that that helps me to focus in on my thoughts and it just helps me to get those channel messages more easily than if I was just sitting with my arms uh, still. So let's see what channel messages are coming in for you guys group. Immediately I'm seeing pink. Okay, so connection to the feminine, that's sort of lighthearted, fun, romantic, playful. Um, you're ready to be romanced. I'm seeing a restaurant now. So like, I feel like there's a date, at least one date that's going to happen for you in January. Um, potentially something to celebrate as well, given that it's a restaurant, you could be going out to celebrate something. But I do just feel in general, you want to be um, taken care of, you want to be treated well, you want to be respected in this month. You're not just willing to stay at home and do the same old things or drive to each other's houses. You want to go out and do things and you want to be shown some some respect and, and just not always be in the same old routine. So I'm definitely seeing that. I'm also seeing the sun now coming through. Obviously something that <laughs> in the Northern Hemisphere at least is in short supply in January, but the sun represents um, obviously your sun sign which is your will, your ego, the way you come across. Um, it's also the masculine energy in your life and the sun is vitality and it's warmth and it's openness. So I really am seeing just this sense of, I want to get out there. I want to have fun. I want to be open and I want to laugh and I don't just want to stay in and do the same old things. Like if you're not prepared to treat me well, then I don't even know what I'm doing here. Okay. I'm seeing a baguette as well for some reason, like sliced French bread. So that could be another reference to the restaurant or um, French cuisine, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally hearing like, you go, girl. <laughs> like, yeah, you're on the right path. You do this. Don't look back. Let's get your cards. the one I dropped on the floor. So we have got Desyatke Miche, the Ten of Swords, and this says Predatilstva, treachery or betrayal. We have got Tuz Miche, the Ace of Swords, and it says Sila, strength. So we've gone from the ending to the beginning. And then we've got Paj Bulov, the Page of Wands, Zavisimust, dependence. Okay, so Aries, Leo, Sagittarius showing up here. Um, it's like you're picking yourself up from a situation where you were lied to or you were betrayed or you were let down, like disappointed. Just, I can't believe you did that to me or I can't believe that you weren't there for me. You know, the, the Ace of Swords is clarity, it's strength, it's power as you move forward. And then the Page of Wands is just this desire, as I said, to get out there. It's this, I don't want to be dependent on the same old routine. I don't want to be dependent on anyone. I want to go out and I want to have fun. I want to laugh. I want to let my hair down. I want to play. Um, that's really the vibe that I'm getting. Like You're not prepared to dwell on the past anymore. You're not prepared to be hurt anymore or stay inside anymore. You want to go out and shine your light and smile and have fun. Okay, so then we have this card from the um, Elfen Öffnen Herzen. Nimm das empfangene Licht mit hinab in deinen Wurzelbereich. And what that means is take the light that you have received into your root area. So it's like drawing light, obviously from the sun potentially, or just from your own self or from your surroundings, drawing that light and happiness down into your very roots. So making it make you grounded, making it be literally what you live for every day, literally what helps you to get through the day, helps you to survive, helps you to feel uh, strong and powerful and rooted in that reality. So it's like not compromising on your happiness, not compromising on the ability to have fun and smile and, and experience joy every day. Obviously, happiness is something that we often can't experience all the time or can't experience every day, but contentment should be. There should be someone who's always trying to make you smile or who's caring about your happiness. And if there isn't, then you need to put that focus on yourself. So that's where I see your love life going in January is just this focus of no more shall I hide away. No more shall I be sad or miserable or staying inside. Even if the weather's horrible, I'm going to go out and I'm going to be wined and dined or I'm going to go and see 
something at the theatre or I'm going to, you know, just go out and do something. <laughs> I don't want to be in anymore. I don't want to be hidden away. So that's your messages from Gaia. <laughs> Gaia's group. I really hope that you've enjoyed both the readings that you've watched today. Please let me know in the comments if this resonated with you. I'd love to hear from you and please do like, share and subscribe as well if you enjoyed this video because that really helps me to get seen more on YouTube and it helps us to get these messages to as many people as possible. Thank you to everyone that has sent a gift to me, a birthday gift to the channel and if you'd like to do that as well, then check out my description box or my comment in the comments section. They're always full of links. I have two wish lists there for new decks that I would love to get for the channel. Um, I also have a PayPal link for tips and donations which support me in the work that I do. I would love it if you'd follow me on Instagram to get daily oracle cards in your feed. You can head over to Patreon and consider becoming a patron if you'd like to get access to exclusive content like extra picker cards, giveaways and healing sessions and things that I do over there. Head over to Etsy to book a private reading or a healing session with me or to get information about your guardian angel. And if you'd like to get 10% off beautiful handmade crystal jewellery with free international shipping, head over to Modern Day Manifestations. The link is in the description box, which will validate the discount code. Use the discount code VIOLET at checkout to get 10% off your first order. I really recommend them. Their jewellery is beautiful. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, <laughs> Gaia's group, and a wonderful January. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hi there, Gjord's group. Welcome to your reading if you chose Gnome D or Gjord. As your gnome, this is going to give you your extra cards and your channeled messages to just give the reading a layered feeling so that it feels more personalized to you. So we're going to get a couple of cards from the Tarot of the Gnomes. We're also going to get a card from the Elfin Öfnen Herzen deck, which is an Earth Elemental um, Oracle deck, Elves Open Hearts. And I'm going to be doing a channel messages first, so I'm going to be shuffling the tarot deck while I open up to those channel messages because I find that that helps me to focus in on my thoughts rather than if my arms are just sort of still by my side. So, Gjord's group, what's coming through for you? I'm seeing blue and orange, honestly, which is like complete opposites on the spectrum, so it could be a case of opposites attract. For you in this month, it could be ups and downs, for example. Blue is obviously uh, reflective and peaceful, but it can also be sad. Orange is vibrant and strong, but it can also be um, intense. So <laughs> interpret that however you want to. It could be, for example, fire and water, or it could be um, uh, fire and air coming together. Um, I do get the sense of like personality clashes, or as I said, opposites attract coming through for you in this month. What else am I seeing? I'm seeing a I'm seeing a goat. Okay, so stubbornness is also um, a theme here. Uh, Capricorn obviously could be showing up with the goat, or potentially Aries. You know, ram, goat. They're quite similar. Um, and I just heard be adaptable. So adaptability is obviously a a big theme for you in love in this month. Circumstances changing quickly, or Maybe your mood's changing quickly and you just need to be adaptable to um, different feelings or different situations across every day or every week. And I'm seeing someone meditating now outside. So it's really just like stay grounded throughout all of this change. Stay grounded throughout um, times when you might feel frustrated or times when you might feel unsure. Doing something mindful can help bring you back down to earth and can help you to sort through those emotions and, and find your clarity in amongst all of that. The number nine is coming through representing completion. Could be the 9th, 29th or 19th of January being especially important as well. So let's get your cards. The ninth sign is also Sagittarius, if that's important to you. So we have got Simjorka Chash, the Seven of Cups, and it says Pravda, Truth. Simjorka Magnet, so the Seven of Pentacles, two sevens right next to each other. Sakrovisha, Treasure. And then we've got uh, Ritsar Magnet, the Knight of Pentacles, and that says Kazna, Treasury. Okay, so Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn showing up. You've got the Seven of Cups, which obviously represents restlessness. It can be confusion or uncertainty. Um, 
But in this particular deck, it's it's Pravda, it's truth. And it's saying that truth often comes out when you're drunk. Okay, so beware of the things that you say when you are drunk or maybe first thing on the morning or last thing at night when you're sort of coming out of sleep or heading into sleep. Be wary of what you say when you're tired or what others say during those sorts of states. Um, it's understanding what's important to you as well with both of these, like treasure and, and treasury. Um, they're both about what your goals are and what's important to you with regards to love and with regards to life. Maybe you are like very differently financially with your partner and maybe you come from different social backgrounds and that's what it is or maybe it's just that you have very different attitudes towards money and saving and financial security and solvency and that's obviously an issue to be very aware of and you might think that that's something I can't compromise on or that's too much of an incompatibility or you might be able to work around it guard your money in this month I would say don't lend anyone money if you can possibly avoid it don't lend anyone money don't like always you know pay for something for someone be very careful about what values you show with regards to money And then we've got uh, Wirf unnötigen Ballast über Bord. Hochfliegen kannst du nur mit leichtem Gepäck. Okay, so um, throw unnecessary ballast overboard. You can only fly high with light baggage. Okay, so interpret that how you will. You know, maybe it's the need to sort of talk out differences between you and a partner maybe it's the need to go separate ways um there was a pile i can't remember which one that did get a hot air balloon which was talking about literally gaining height flying higher um so maybe you chose that pile but that is just really really interesting to me that that's come up and obviously you know if there is fundamental incompatibility that's something you really need to think seriously about um, but it could just be habits and behaviors or mindsets that need to be thrown overboard in order for the overall vehicle of the relationship to work and function more effectively. So I hope you've enjoyed both of your readings today with me, Gjord's group. Thank you so much for being here with me. Have a lovely rest of your day and a wonderful January. And if you would like to send anything as a, as a gift to the channel, then the links are in the description box below and also in the comment that I post in the comments section. I have two wish lists. I also have a uh, PayPal link for tips and donations to support me in the work that I do. I would love it if you'd follow me on Instagram where you can get daily oracle cards in your feed from me. You can also head over to Patreon and consider becoming a patron. Um, over there you get access to exclusive content and extra things that I do over there just for patrons. You can um, head over to Etsy to book a private reading with me or a healing session or to get information about your guardian angel. And if you'd like to get 10% off beautiful crystal jewelry with free worldwide shipping, then head over to Modern Day Manifestations. Use the link below to activate the discount code. The discount code is violet, which you should apply at checkout and you'll get 10% off your first order and I thoroughly recommend them. Have a lovely rest of your day. As I said before, take care of yourself and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.